Hi guys, so today I'm gonna show you guys how I study on my iPad. So I have the most recent, I think seventh generation on iPad. So I use it and I also use an Apple Pencil. And I wanted to break down to you guys how I study for the physical science classes, which I've taken at Cornell, such as math. Currently I'm in math 1106. I also took Gen Chem, which was uh, 2018, 2017, and then I took biology, I took bio 1445 and bio 1350, and then I also wanted to break down how I study for the social science classes, and those that I've taken so far are psychology, which is psych 101, and then, well, I am taking a history class slash a research class, which is history of mental illness in the US, and I've also taken languages, Spanish classes um, and I wanted to show like the similarities in how I study for them but also the differences and break that down to you guys so I know a lot of us are on online classes and I wanted to especially show how I study for online classes using my iPad and how technology can help us to better or understanding of our material so when I say how I study I mean how I learn because Testing and studying for a test, I think, is a different part of preparation that I use. So this would be more so the beginning part of the course slash the material, how you apply yourself to it, how you internalize it first. And then later on, I would hope to film a video that will show you guys how I prepare for testing in these materials. Um, so for physical science classes, you will get exams. But for social science classes, I haven't gotten exams. I've gotten short responses, discussions, and essays. So let me show you guys how I prepare and study for them. So there's different means of interacting with the course material. So you have the lecture, the style in teaching, where the teacher talks to you and presents the material to you and writes on the chalkboard or writes on the board. Um, and then you have discussions where you'll discuss in class with the teacher, with friends, I mean classmates, um, and also with yourself, if you learn that way. Um, there is office hours. So office hours is when you go outside of class and talk to the teacher or talk to a TA, whatever. Then you have support classes for classes. You have tutors. You have the internet textbooks and then you have homework problem sets papers memos discussion boards however else outside of the classroom that you in interact with the material and are tested on your knowledge so i think both physical science classes and social science require interacting with all of those means of support and now i want to tell you guys the process by which i go about studying in general and then i'll be specific with two examples or two classes that i'm taking this semester i do background reading i would use a researching in a textbook or research on the internet to get background information or just to learn the material for the first time um, so in this case I would be reading ahead. While I do this, I write out the material as well to memorize in the case of a textbook. Um, in the case of social sciences, I'm just reading and I will write down definitions, underline certain words I don't know or certain new terms that are specific or important for the course and then make note of that and go back to it later. Then second, you have the lecture or the teaching of material which right now we're using Zoom at Cornell. You do that to give the material context. Using Zoom is able to present the information that your teacher will want you to know in the desired order. And it kind of combines visual and auditory learning. So some people are for that, some people aren't. But I think that's the purpose behind it. I think on my iPad, how I'm able to make that me is to listen, pause the pre-recorded lectures and just write and use colors, use contrast, use emphasis uh, by highlighting, sizing of different words versus the other and kind of bringing order to everything that's being thrown at me. Kind of bringing more color and life to the black and white chalkboard onto my screen so that the color would be a way I can memorize in the future and a visual relation to my own writing so that I can memorize better. The third part of the process for me would be reading over notes of all forms and reworking your notes. So this to me is like the first reinforcement process. So I said I wrote from the textbook 
um, I wrote notes from the lecture. So then make connections between those two. Rework both of those notes to make sure that you have a complete representation of what you need to know. So this may be timely, but if you take good notes, it really won't be. And this is also you know, relevant to if you take written notes on paper and pencil, which I would like to show you guys how I do that as well. This should help you to reinforce the material for the first time in your mind. And then the fourth part of the process is practice slash discussion. So this is where you practice to understand what you don't know and then you discuss to find out the answers to that. And I call this the second reinforcement process. So just discussions, as I said with you, friends, classmates, teachers, whoever you need to go to, because as you would have been presented with the information, you would have had to think about questions or, or need to make a connection with. So I would say that get those questions answered. Then five, I would say review as if you've never seen the material. So look back at the material, kind of mentally with a fresh um, pair of eyes and try to use this as an opportunity to lighten any dark area. So go through notes that you took from the lecture, go through notes that you took from the textbook. And this is the third reinforcement. And then lastly, you do some testing before the test. So this is still a study process. Obviously this is preparing you for the test, but I would say in a later video, I would like to show you guys how to prepare for testing and how I prepare for testing because that would involve time limitations and the pressure of the test and just other things that come along with the test. So I would say you do quizzes, you should have questions from homework, problem sets, or you should have prompts for essays, whatever. That, that is kind of test, but I would say questions that came up in your mind that have made you confused are able to test you on the material and then make environmental associations with the material. Um, I learned in Psychology 101 that if you do that, if you either go to the location of the test and study, study the material or if you make a word and space associations, it should help you memorize better. So those are my, my recommendations. So I want to specifically show you guys how I prepare for chemistry and a history class or b social class so for chemistry as i said i literally look at the, all the readings that were assigned and i make a one page review slash note of the entire chapter color coded very nicely put so that i can enjoy looking at what i have to study and then i attend slash watch lecture and make notes again there are usually sometimes some discrepancies between what the lecturer is saying or the professor is saying and what the textbook has. He usually corrects the textbook if there's something that it says wrong or he adds to what the textbook says. So that's why I say you need to rework your notes after you read the textbook and after you go to lecture. And then you go over to the you go over the material alone or by reading, that's what I do. I usually read and then I also would practice and that'd be in a group because we have homework. And then I repeat the steps above. I lay, I hope to lay all the material that you're seeing right now, lay it all in front of me. That's what I'm gonna do to study for my finals and absorb it. Chemistry is something where it is, organic chemistry is something where it is all about the flow of the reactions and the mechanisms and visually remembering molecules but we're at a point where we do or should know the molecules but it's just to memorize the mechanisms and for me to do that i think visually i am able to learn better by literally just putting information in front of me so if that is in your case if you'd like to rewrite some mechanisms and put that up on sticky boards put that up on blank pieces of paper and just paste it about that's a way where you can be, you're able to reinforce even more. So then, I want to tell you guys about history of mental illness in the US. So this is a biology and society class, but it's also in the history department, it's also in American studies department. I'm a biology and society major, and this really requires you to read, discuss, and write. Three main, I think, things that social science classes will require of you. Read, discuss, write. So first, I read essays or chapters that were assigned 
and I make notes, underline, highlight, um, active reading, and I think of the week's theme in mind. And then also my lecturer, such professor, he gives us questions that we should consider. I ask questions and seek background knowledge on whatever reading I did. I do not know American history as well as an American would, so I have to Google certain events, certain names, persons, just so that I can understand the reading a little bit more. And then we have discussions, we literally have a discussion, that's the structure of the class. And then I reread to prepare for an essay. Reread, I close read. If I have an essay prompt, I will literally underline everything at the end of reading it, just because I need to make sure that I understood what I just read. I would call myself a lazy reader or like a absent-minded reader, things don't stick with me the first time I read it. I have to read again and again and again. I'd also say when you're reading to pick out the thesis statement of the essay or the reading and find the supporting points to the arguments as well as make sure you understand the conclusions that the person made from the essay or from arguing their points. And then lastly, I'd say find present or current applications of knowledge. I find when in this history class when I'm able to apply what's happening in that time to know and make connections between the past and the present, then I'm able to reinforce what I learned and actually make it sit down in my head. Those are the ways I go about studying using my iPad. Um, if you are interested in seeing the actual study, how I study guide that I made, go on at by Leone Fark and you'll see posts about how I journal, how I you know, be a college student and how journaling basically helps me with that system. Everything from note taking to journaling to organization. And yeah, so thank you guys for watching this video. Let me know what you'd like to see and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.